So let's take a look at what kind of details we are missing. We are missing this detail right here. I don't care a lot about this little plastic piece here, but the the boolean here I think would it looks interesting. We are also missing this top piece, which is a little complicated actually, but as usual, when there's a shape that's like really tricky to make, you just make it separately and then you boolean it with our uh, main object and then just fix the geometry after. And you know, there's a little bit of detail here, but I don't, I don't know if I want to do, model that in, because I don't know. I'm thinking maybe there's something I can do with this area later, once we reach Substance Painter. But I'm not sure yet. For now, I'm thinking if I should do this. And it's funny. Every time I, I ask myself if I should do it, I just end up doing it anyway. So I don't know why I ask. YOLO. Let's do this piece. What do you say? Whoa, I just realized this. This is a little bit softer than I intended. Look at this. Uh, I didn't actually intend for it to be that soft. So I'm going to add some quick edge loops here to fix that. Where do these edges go? OK, these pieces are not connected, so you don't have to worry about this edge. It seems like it ends here because they're separate objects. OK, so this, let's add an edge loop right here and see what this looks like. Wow, I didn't add anything. What? What was that? OK. That helps. Okay, another one right here, here, and here. That looks a lot better <laughs> compared to the mess we had before. So, Shift Z. Yep. And then Shift Y. Much better. And any other little detail I might want to fix? Okay, let's try doing this piece now. So we need a sort of an L shape. So let's move a cube in. You know, if you want to move something really quickly, just hold down V and snap it uh, around the area, and then you can like finesse it afterwards. So how do we make this L? Let's extrude this. This is not to scale. <laughs> Actually, I'll delete those after. First, let's make sure it's to scale. This is kind of tricky, though. I don't know if I'm going to replicate it exactly because it's the bend. And then there's a slanted edge, and then it angles this way. And I don't know, that's, that's a little too much. Kind of want to move on as much as I like modeling. I don't want to be here forever, you know, I want to finish this project. So. so I might just make my own version of that detail. So let's see, let's make Let's select all of these faces, control middle mouse. Okay, so in the image here, this detail goes all the way. So snap. Oh, snap. I can't tell, but it seems that this side is wider than this side. I think. Okay. 
And what do I want to do here? Let's see this. Let's snap this right here. I'll shift W because I can't see. Snap to this vert. And what do we want to do with this? Do we want to snap this all here? I think that would make the most sense. Just to get an idea of what it looks like. Make sure I need one. You know, I had a bunch of views for this type of cases, but I only saved these images because I didn't think I was gonna use them. Oh, I can see now, I can see it on the other side. Yeah, I added some detail here that the reference doesn't have because this just, this face right here, the slanted face isn't even in the reference. So we're just gonna make something up. I'm going to move this face right, oops, here. Okay. And how far do I wanna move it? Here's fine. Okay, let's delete this. Who this is this? Is the this is gonna be uh, a little bit messy when it comes to cleanup? <coughs> ah, bless me. How many segments do I use there? T, I use three, okay. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna use three, but I'm gonna make it smaller. Because if I make it the same size, it looks weird. So the inner bevel needs to be smaller. And let's actually make this go all the way down. Yeah, this is gonna be painful to fix, but thankfully we're using Maya, and this is like one of the, uh, the things that Maya excels at, like fixing tiny little basic details like this. So just in case, we're gonna save. And here we go. This and this, Boolean Union. Wait a minute. Oh, it's because this is open. So just temporarily, I'm gonna select these open holes. I think that was redundant. Fill hole, just temporarily. Okay, now let's do the Boolean again. There we go. Now we can get rid of this face we added. Don't worry too much about this dirty geometry. We're gonna fix all of that. This is kind of getting in the way actually. Okay, perfect. And let's delete history. Let's start fixing this. So this edge can go right here. This edge is gonna go up and just temporarily we'll put it there. What is going on here? Let's delete that. There's a weird face in there. Let's delete it. Did 
this needs an edge right here. So select these two edges, Shift C, and then scale them. And now we can bridge, oh, we can't bridge that. Okay, it's fine. We'll just add an edge loop right here. Oops, we can't. So we'll start at the bottom. Move this into place and then merge it because this isn't actually merged. Excellent. And now we shouldn't have any issues bridging these faces. Slowly but surely. Oops, I created geometry. Really, that's as far as it goes? Okay. Ooh, that's merged, excellent. Snap there. Maya is amazing at this kind of stuff. You know, the snapping, the adding edges. Maya may not have modifiers, but the basic tools are amazing. I mean, the, the fact of just, I, I can just select this and then click here and then just scale that. You, you can actually do that as easily in other software. Just for now, we can always change the geometry later. Right now, I'm just trying to make it look a little bit cleaner. Double that vert. Sorry, I'm not talking a lot right now, but I mean, there's not much to say. It's just repeating the same thing over and over again. This is gonna be a lot of the same. A lot of the, the same stuff we already did. And don't worry too much about like uh, having quads everywhere. I'm just trying to continue some edge loops right now. Ooh, weird face. Yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of that face for now. It's like going underneath or something. Yeah, let's just get <laughs> it's going all the way over here. Yeah, let's just delete that and all the way down and then merge. Excellent. I like how uh, the piece that we booleaned in is uh, a Lambert. So let's assign material again. Excellent. We're almost there. So now we just need an edge that goes all the way down. We already know how to do that. In fact, I can just add another loop right here. Nah, we're gonna do the traditional way, so. Into my views, select the whole thing. Whoops. Oh, this is my top view. I was wondering what's going on. This looked a little weird. So make sure we select all of this. Wait, why can't I? Oh, I was in, was I in vertex mode? 
Okay, shift C. Here's my edge, it's going all the way around. Let's scale it. These faces. What's going on with these faces? Face is actually fine. So let's see if this works. Hold down V and snap here and merge. Now we just need an edge that goes through here. Let's scale it just to make sure it's flat. And merge again. I don't actually have to go into object mode every time I merge because I think I, I actually coded that in. Uh, actually, I didn't. Okay. Huh. Okay. No, so I guess I do. So you see, it looks complicated. Uh, it looks complicated at first, but if you, you just take it one step at a time, things become a lot simpler. So whenever you have to model anything, just try to look at the individual components and tackle them one by one. And we're not we're not done yet, but but I mean this is looking a lot more reasonable than it did before. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. So Yeah, I think there's still a few engons to fix, but I'll get I'll get to those later. I might not even need to fix them. So here I'm wondering if I should add that little bit angle or at least something similar. I honestly don't want to, but let me just very quickly see what that would look like. And I think I can do that by deleting this edge and then moving this vert. Actually, I'm just gonna use my target weld again. I have the, the U key for my target weld. Alt S to fix the shading. Uh, yeah, it kind of looks cool. <laughs> we have to keep it now. Okay, and don't worry about triangle here. We'll worry about all those things later. Can we add an edge loop here now? We can't, oh, okay, because of this. Okay, so where do I wanna take this? Yeah, let's go this way. By the way, the multi-cut is camera-based. Remember when we were slicing? Well, it, it's also camera-based when you're just clicking uh, well, when you're just clicking like this, so if you do something like that, you'll think maybe you got a straight line, but then you'll spin the camera and it's like, oh. So just keep that in mind whenever you're using multi-cut. That's why I don't always just like multi-cut all the way to the end along a, a curve, because then when you spin the camera, the edge is going to look all weird. So that's why I sometimes just take it a few steps at a time. Let's leave it there for now. And can I now add an edge loop here? Okay, let's go with the classic. Select through. Whoa, I'm dizzy. Shift C. And then scale it. And uh, don't worry about the other side because we're just going to mirror. I only care about this side right now. That looks awesome. <laughs> I'm glad I, I added this detail. So what do I want to do with this edge? 
guess this edge goes this way. And we're going to need another edge loop right here. Right here. Now let's do something about this area. Actually, first, first, let's just continue this. Holding down shift, all the points are added exactly at the center. And the multi is just such an amazing tool. Okay, let's leave it there for now. For now, let's just connect it. Let's put this here or here. Yeah, let's go there. And this is a little intense. You know, if you don't want this triangle here, this is incredibly easy to fix as well, because you can just add an edge right here, and then just move it down, and there we go. <laughs> we have a quad instead of an edge, but I mean, I don't really know if that's necessary. So let's move some of these edge loops up as well. Just leave them there. This is the edge that I don't actually know where I want to take. I think I might just, oops, weld this right here. Actually make sure I don't have any, anything else selected. I don't know if you knew that too. If you uh, select multiple components and then go to your uh, your well tool. Oops. Oh, I guess it only works on verts. Anyway, you can like move multiple verts at once. Oh, okay, like this. And you weld all of those points there. So that's how you can weld multiple uh, components at the, at the same time. Kind of want a sharp edge right here. Oops, I didn't click. Where did that edge go, however? Oh, it goes this way and it's super sharp. Okay, we'll deal with that later. Oh yeah, we need an edge loop right here. So let's add one right here. We can actually end these uh, loops right here. We don't need them to keep going all the way. We can just leave this giant end on here and it's gonna look fine. So again, don't worry about everything being quads. The only reason quads are desirable is because they allow you to do stuff like uh, and add an edge loop very easily, which an Engon doesn't let you do because the software doesn't know which, where to go. But that's kind of why you tend to avoid Engons. But other than that, I mean, Engons are completely fine. For sub D modeling, at least. It's kind of finished. Oh, okay, we still need to have a little bit of an issue here with the sharpness. This does not go the whole way. <clears throat> oh, it's because it's an Engon.
<laughs> I'm just doing this by hand. Still want this edge to go like up here somehow. Problem is that if I add an edge right here to sharpen this up, no way, I might be able to do it. So let's add it right here. Does that look too sharp? Yes, it does. Right here. That messes with the whole the the sharpness for the rest of the the object though. So that's why I was trying to add the edge loop right here instead. <clears throat> yeah, I think we can do that. Wait, where did this edge come from? Don't know when I added that edge. Okay, and now that we have this edge right here, we can just continue it all the way over here. This can end right there as well. It's trying to make this transition less, less curvy. And I think we're done with this piece. I mean, we can try to make it more interesting by doing something like this. And like sharpening that up, but that I don't think we need to. Actually, let's try. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this face and grow my selection. And do the same thing. Actually, let's, no, yeah, let's keep the, the faces. And now, I can go to deform. I have a on the shelf button right here, but just in case you don't have it, deform lattice. And then make sure our divisions are set to the lowest possible level and right click in an empty area of your viewport, lattice point. And shear this. Does that look like subdivided? Not bad, huh? I can actually just hide the deformer and not delete it. If you delete it, it's actually gonna remove that detail. 
What do you think about that? Would you prefer this or what we had before? I think the problem is that I selected way too many faces for my lattice. So let's not select these. And let's only apply the lattice to those. And where did my lattice go? I do not know. Form. Where's my lattice? I'm just going to delete history because it seems like I already have an, another uh, deformer there somewhere. Let's try that again. I feel like I'm doing... Oh! <laughs> it's because I'm an isolated view. And normally, an isolated view, when you create new geometry, it's actually added to the isolated view, but I don't know why the deformer isn't. So control one. And now we should be able to see our lattice. That was weird. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty cool. Should I do the same thing here? No. You know, one thing that bothers me is this little bend, but I will be fine. It might look weird in the normal map, but if it does, then we'll fix it when we get to that. Okay. We did it. Oh my God, we're so close to finishing this. Boolean time. Let's put this cube right here. And scale it down. Snapping. <laughs> Let's just duplicate the cube. <clears throat> it really is the easiest way. So, Boolean difference, delete history. Oh, I forgot. We need, maybe I should leave the, the hole closed for now. I don't think we have to do the other side. I think it'll only the side that's uh, being affected by the Boolean matters. I'm not sure, let me check. Hey, see, perfect. Okay, now a leftover cube. Oh, same thing with this actually. Now, all we have to do is fix this. Should be an easy fix. Reactivate the tool with Y. This needs to continue all the way.
Uh, I'm thinking I'm actually gonna modify this a little bit because I don't really want to add an edge loop here to make this sharper because it's gonna make the whole thing sharper. So I'm going to simply delete all of this and make my flat face here instead. Wait a minute. I added two segments when I bridged. <laughs> Bridge and only one. There we go. Perfect. So it's a little smaller than before, but it'll do. What was the size of this? Look how, I like how I'm asking you. <laughs> Let's see, I think it was uh, minus one. Was it supposed to look that bad? Yeah, whatever. Whoa, what's going on there? Just remake that geometry. So small but I guess we can make it larger but we'll do that after for now let's try to make this look the same as the other side so that means we add an edge loop there My mirror is so slow. I guess there's just a ton of geometry. worry about the bottom. <laughs> we'll mirror that. Blue. 
For now, we could do that. Oh yeah, I knew I was missing something. Um, oh yeah, those two edge loops. Oh, it's because they're not scaled, right? There we go. <laughs> I was wondering why it wouldn't snap. And shift Y. I don't think I need this middle one anymore. And I think we're good. I... Hmm. Let's see what it looks like if we make it larger. select this and this and actually the whole loop wait a second why is it selecting all of that wait a minute oh it's cuz it's looping around <laughs> Okay, well, you know, let's just use the orthographic view. Let's use the front view. Uh, verts, verts. Don't really care about that side. Okay, now let's see what this looks like if it's larger. I think it looks better. I like it. Looks really good. And now we're missing this one right there. Wait a minute, are these sharp enough? We're missing an edge loop. This area is a little soft, but you know what? I don't think it matters because it's it's not really part of the silhouette like this is, for instance. Because it's on the inside instead of the outside. So this soft area right here shouldn't really be that noticeable in the normal map, but just in case, let's add an edge loop right there. And another one right here. Sharpen it up a little bit. Okay, cool. So. Next Boolean. <laughs> Why is it snapping over there? I guess it's because I have no edges here. No, I don't. Okay, there we go. And it's, oh, it's in there, however. Hmm. We can do it. Believe. Kind of in the middle. So now I'm just going to align these faces with. Oops, I pressed B instead of V. Perfect. And now this face, I want to align that with. Um, nothing actually. I'm going to align to this at this height, but then I'm going to move it up a little bit. Just a little bit. You'll see why in a second. Okay, and now the depth. The depth. What do we do with the depth? 
Is this big enough? It's a lot larger here. Yeah, you know what? Let's make it a little bit larger. There we go. It's kind of it's not going to look as big once we do the boolean. How deep? Uh, doesn't really matter, I don't think. Let's see what that looks like. Mm, okay. Okay. You know, it does actually look larger than I thought it was going to, but let's let's subdivide it first. If not, I'll just uh, go back to one of my saves. I'm constantly saving the file. Whenever I'm gonna like add something new, I'll just save. Uh, uh, wait, I think I already said this. Uh, increment and save. Mm, okay. So, edge loop right here, edge loop right here. Align them a little bit better. These are not aligned, that means, there we go. To scale them. This is fairly easy because I can just add an edge loop going all the way through very carefully. Okay. And yeah, let's bubble that. These are our control loops. Slowly taking shape. Now we just need some sides, so same thing. I don't actually have to go all the way down, don't forget about the mirror. Shift C, scale. Okay, same thing here. Where is it? I actually can't see it. Uh, okay, it's on the outside. Right here. We're almost there. This is super easy to fix. We can just add some insets here. So we'll do that at the end. And I need an edge loop right here. Where does this go? Okay, it barely affects anything. So that's why I made this edge really close to the, the edge I already had. So I can do this and barely affect how this looks. Oh. Right here. I actually want to add another edge in there. I don't need it, but what happens if I just do this? Okay, 
wait for now. Okay, now let's actually fix this area. Whoops, it's not the tool I wanted. Control shift to slide. And finally, an edge loop. Hold on shift after you clicked with the multi cut to snap. I am going to delete this side and then just duplicate this side, control shift D, and make sure I reverse it, holding down J, there we go, snap it into place, combine these two, merge, oh wait, turn off, select by angle, forgot to do that. bridge. I don't like how sharp this edge is right here, but I don't have a lot of choice there. Let's see what we can do to fix it. These could be a little bit sharper. And we don't even have to continue these edges all the way. We can just leave them here in the middle and it like barely affects our subdivision. See? Like everything else is still flowing just fine. I changed my mind. I made these a little too sharp. I don't care about that end gone. 
In fact, I can just delete that part. I'm happy with that. Oh, it's because I'm mirroring while subdivided, right? I think that's why it's slow. Let me see. So. Yeah, it's a lot slower if you mirror when subdivided, apparently. You know, I thought the booleans were going to be very annoying, but they're actually kind of fun. 